Hello, everybody, and welcome back to World Pride Human Rights Conference. Look at you early birds. Thank you so much for getting up and getting here, and you're not going to regret it. We have so much to talk about and think about today. My name is Frank Kelly. My pronouns are she and her, and I am your host for day two of the conference. I'm a journalist with the ABC, and some of you may know my voice from my many, many, many years of broadcasting on TV and radio. Today, I am dressed in black pants and a bright orange top, hopefully to match the mood in this theater today of bright ideas and sometimes sparky and flashy discussion and debate. Before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are gathered on the land of the Gadigal people, the traditional owners of this Darling Harbour area where the building stands. And we pay our respects to elders past and present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us today. A special thank you too for Janil for that welcoming, such a generous welcome and for sharing her story and the story of her people. So thanks very much, Janil. As most of you know by now, this is the first time World Pride has come to the Southern Hemisphere and we made an absolutely glorious start with last Friday's outdoor concert with not one but two Minogue sisters, who would have guessed that, followed up by the Mardi Gras parade on Saturday night. We are very proud of Mardi Gras here in Sydney, a parade that started out as a protest march mixed with a bit of fun on the night of June the 24th, 1978 and ended in a violent confrontation with the police assaults, arrests, and some lives changed forever when their names were later published in the newspaper that resulted in loss of jobs and careers, families and friends. It was a dark stain on our history, but it was the beginning of something very strong. And the 78ers will always have a special place in the LGBTQIA plus history. For me personally, I have been a lesbian feminist for more than 40 years, and I know how hard fought the gains for all of us have been, and how hard we must, how hard we must continue to fight for equality and acceptance and to maintain the ground we have made so far. That's why I am so proud to be a part of this human rights conference. Partying is great, but it takes hard work to make lasting change, and we can never rest until LGBTQIA plus people everywhere on the planet are free to live as themselves with dignity, with safety and equality. That's what we're here for. Yesterday, on day one of the conference, we gathered to share our dreams for the world we want to create together and identified some of the barriers to achieving that vision. We heard about the role the Australian government's playing in promoting LGBT plus human rights and what movements are underway in our region and across the globe. We learned from the collective experience and expertise of a range of presenters and panelists and reflected on the various challenges that we must work to overcome. Today, we're gonna to think about the skills and the strategies we need to achieve that change. But before we get down to that important work, for those of you who weren't here yesterday, we have a few housekeeping notes, quite a few, so settle in. First, please ensure your mobile phones are on silent, tick, and follow the instructions of staff in case of an emergency. Now I'm gonna run through our accessibility provisions for those of you who may need them. On screens either side of me, you'll find Auslan and international sign interpreters. We also have audio description available in the first three rows of the auditorium through devices that you can collect at registration. Alternatively, you can also use the Live Voice smartphone app, which is available to download from the Apple App Store and the Google Play App Store. You will have noticed that some delegates may be wearing a different lanyard to you. The hidden disability sunflower lanyard is worn by people with hidden disabilities, while the yellow lan yeah, lanyards with no photos written on them are for people who want to remain anonymous. So please do be mindful of that if you're taking photos. Be mindful to respect everybody's privacy. For those of us here in person, I'd encourage you to download the conference app. If you haven't done it already, do it now. On the app, you can engage with the Q&A portion of our panels later today. You'll find a full agenda, um, list of presenters, their biographies, and also access to live chat. On the app, you can also find the Human Rights Conference Code of Conduct by clicking Resources. The Code of Conduct reflects our values of curiosity, listening, respect, diversity, integrity, and courage. 
Sydney World Pride wants this conference to be a safe space for all of us. If you need help resolving a conflict on site, please call or text the number on the screen or email conference at sydneyworldpride.com with the subject line incident. And if, you ever, if ever you feel unwell or overwhelmed, please know you can leave any session without judgment, without explanation. You can just go and do and be where you need to be. If you need someone to talk to about how you're feeling, or you just need a quiet space away from the crowds, you can find the wellbeing lounge and counselling rooms on level four. You can also find self-care tips and contact details for other mental health services in the back pages of your program. We also have a space for quiet reflection and prayer and a First Nations space for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander attendees. That's all on level three. This conference is possible thanks to the work and support of a number of key organisations. We would especially like to thank our community partners, the First Nations Advisory Committee and the International Advisory Board. We are brilliant.